Could we create humans? The answer might surprise you. Science Behind the Inhumans So as many of you may have heard, Marvel Studios is doing an Inhumans TV show rather than a movie, but the first two episodes will actually be played in IMAX during September of next year, which means we have one more MCU property to look forward to in 2017. What it also means is, now I've got something to do for the show. The Inhumans have always been fairly popular, especially with fans of the MCU. I believe the allure of them in the cinematic universe comes from the similarities they share with the X-Men, which, like it or not, has been a fairly successful movie series thus far. But what makes them so close to the X-Men? Well, X-Men are mutants, which are humans naturally born with superpowers, while Inhumans gained their powers artificially long, long ago. There are individual Inhumans who are born with powers, but those powers were implanted into their ancestors by the Kree aliens during a galactic war. Desperate for help, the Kree decided to experiment on human life to create super soldiers. They believed their plans failed, but weren't around to notice that the descendants of those experiments developed Inhuman abilities. So could this be achieved in real life? Well, interestingly enough, it's been tried before. During the mid-1920s, Joseph Stalin was the man in charge of Russia. Although this occurred before World War II, Stalin was already feeling the tension in the world, and decided he needed a plan to have the world's greatest army. Believe it or not, Stalin basically developed a plan to create an army of Inhumans. He wanted to breed humans with chimpanzees in an attempt to create a super strong, super intelligent, and super aggressive army of ape men soldiers. Of course, this rise of the ape versus the Red Army never took place, but it begs the question, did Stalin know what he was doing? Did he genuinely believe that the research yielded successful information for the project, or did he just jump blindly into it, not knowing how this sort of thing works? Well, it's hard to say since he never got to try it. But research since then has shown us some interesting tidbits regarding abilities like those possessed by Inhumans. Studies have shown that something called genetic transfer is possible in certain species. For instance, there is once a group of lab mice that were injected with a muscle growth hormone, and it was successful seeing how these mice ended up being nicknamed Schwarzenegger mice. But what exactly is genetic transfer? All forms of life have a genetic code in them, which is a system of DNA, ribosomes, codons, and RNA that make something itself. This genetic code is like a puzzle, with each piece being a gene, which codes the body for a specific function. Let's say we took an alligator and a rabbit. Now let's look inside at the genetic code of an alligator. There's a lot to it, but one gene we could pick out is the one that codes the alligator's body to have those weird transparent eyelids they have. What we do is we take from the alligator's DNA, and we inject it into the DNA of the rabbit. That right there is genetic transfer. However, something like this is unlikely to work. Because the rabbit is already alive and developed, the body may not know how to take this new piece of the puzzle and may even break the puzzle trying to get it to fit. So does this mean that humans can't be created? No, but it does put it as unlikely. However, there may be something else that could ease in the process. If we took the eyelid gene from the alligator, but instead of putting it into a developed rabbit, we put it into the embryo of a rabbit, the chance of the rabbit being born with these transparent eyelids is actually far more likely. However, just because it's more likely doesn't mean it will happen. Much like I discussed in my Spider-Man video, while it's possible for us to create humans with certain genetic enhancements, it's a tricky process that we really haven't fully mastered yet. In fact, we're far from it. Aside from that, I'm not sure we could create in humans with the fantastical powers of, say, Black Bolt and Medusa. Since no animals really possess the powers they hold, we couldn't create them from a single person. We would need to follow an entire bloodline, producing more and more genes in an individual until we got to the end goal. However, that might be promising. Take Black Bolt, for instance, with his supersonic powers. It's possible that, following a bloodline, one could insert the gene for a louder voice in every embryo in the bloodline, up until it's a voice that could be dangerously loud like Black Bolt's. But again, this won't always work. This practice of inserting the gene into the embryo has often resulted in the embryo dying, or simply not handling the trait well once it's born, which can lead to various biological and humanitarian issues. Even though we have the means to theoretically create in humans, we're still a long way off from perfecting it.